thank you very much. Uh, thank you, President Kim, uh, Ambassador Singh, Ambassador Ma, uh, Professor King, and Professor Kong. Uh, it's my pleasure, it's my uh, great honor to speak to, uh, in Korea Foundation today. And I will briefly introduce uh, the approaches and the challenges of public diplomacy in China. Uh, I think uh, this is a very important, very new, but very complex <coughs> conception in China in, uh, in recent years. And uh, I'm one of the groups uh, who worked for pub public diplomacy research uh, very early in China, but the time is just uh, for the last uh, 10 years. But before that, there were huge members of persons who were working for public diplomacy in contemporary China for more than uh, 50 to 60 years since the new China was founded. Uh, before uh, uh, 1990s, it was called external, uh, external propaganda, which in Chinese is called Wai Xuan, uh, how to explain China to abroad. Uh, in Chinese communist system. So uh, I, I think in the late 1990s, the public diplomacy is, uh, existed in Chinese academia research and uh, during uh, the first years of, uh, of the 21st century, we understand that the public diplomacy is very important, very new, very charming conception that can uh, accompanying the, with uh, China's rising. So uh, as I said, that the public diplomacy is a long time working, but new, new conception in Chinese professionals. I will show you a very new work which raised a huge debate in China for uh, China's public diplomacy work. This is a video which showed in, to, uh, in uh, the early months of Last year in New York, the Times Square, uh, the video was accompanied by the very important state visit of President Hu Jintao to the United States, which was uh, formulated and created by the Information Office of the State Council. Uh, this is a very important department of uh, China to do the work of public diplomacy because theoretically, it uh, the information of, uh, office of the state country charged all the work of foreign correspondent in China. This video lasted uh, two minutes, but it raised uh, the debating for two months. Let's see. From the uh, January to the end of February of 2011, the video show again and again and again in the screen of Times Square of, in New York. The people who uh, give high praise to, to this uh, national advertisement, as we call it, say that this is the first time that Chinese people, common person, appeared in national advertisement instead of the party. So. Uh, we are very seldom to see that uh, very common face of Chinese people, not the Great War, not the Forbidden City, appeared in, uh, to, to uh, explain that uh, the contemporary China. But the people who criticize this advertisement raise the question, can you recognize the ending finger 
in this national advertisement. Maybe to American, they just recognized Yao Ming, who is a very uh, important basketball player in United States, playing basketball in uh, NBA of the United States. But the other person, they cannot understand that. And they will have the feeling that, oh, Chinese is coming. Because in the uh, so-called World Cross, the Times Square, you saw Chinese appeared again and again and again. So totally, we calculate 8,400 times appeared in the screen of Times Square. They will shock the local American to see that uh, it's not a national advertisement, but it's just a, like a symbolic to see. Now you see Chinese is uh, invading New York. So. <laughs> So this debating existed for quite a long time, but we give very high price to, uh, to, to uh, we give very uh, positive evaluation to this debating, not this advertisement, because we think during this debating, Chinese people understand that if you if we want to explain the contemporary China as a work of public diplomacy to the world, we should understand more than uh, more uh, we should understand more of the content than the way that we uh, should use the, to explain China. Uh, I will just uh, very quickly feedback uh, the advertisement and uh, let's go back to the history of Chinese public diplomacy, which uh, was existing now. I think the formulation of public diplomacy in contemporary China need to understand the five important time point. The first time uh, since, 19, uh, since 1840, the uh, modernization and the nationalization of China, of modern China, uh, give high uh, influence to the contemporary public diplomacy because this year is the first time that uh, foreigners invade the uh, mainland of China, which formulate the so-called nationalism of contemporary China. Now, when you uh, go to China, you will uh, very frequently hear a newspaper which is called Global Times. Uh, they, uh, re uh, they, they take this newspaper as a flag of Chinese nationalism because uh, it criticizes the many countries during the conflict, the border conflict or the international competition between China and other countries. Le but this newspaper is a very uh, popular newspaper in China, even in young intelligence. The question is why? Why they raise the flag of nationalism, but they still welcomed in Chinese citizens. So the problem is that the nationalism uh, still influences the public diplomacy. Uh, China likes to show the positive face very much to the international audience, but we will have a very long time debating with the uh, foreign media, foreign correspondent, why you just uh, focus on the negative face uh, of China, but you ignore the positive because sometimes we found that the modernization motivation and uh, nationalism is a very important part of uh, Chinese public diplomacy now. And then the next time will be uh, 1949, as you know very well. The international relationship strategy of Chinese Communist Party from 1949, they like to be independent for uh, the first 30 or 40 years. And then they try to uh, change the face to be more open, open-minded to the world. So from 1978, Chinese people uh, opened the gate, opened the process, historic process of reforming and opening. They found that the international opinion circumstance is very important to China when Chinese people or uh, Chinese government try to cooperate with other countries. During 1978, there is a very important word which was raised by Mr. Deng Xiaoping and uh, last until now, the word is Tao Guang Yang Hui. I don't know whether some uh, Chinese scholar can understand this word. Until 2009, Chinese scholars still 
argued how to translate Tao Guang Yang Hui into English. Uh, maybe some uh, some friend, uh, Korea friend can translate into Korea. It's very uh, Eastern conce cultural conception. But if we translate Kao Guang Yang Hui into hitting the light, they will give the international audience a kind of emotion that Chinese people have ambition, but they hide the ambition. They just try to do some secret work and uh, uh, they need time. And com accompanied with Tao Guang Yang Hui, the uh, foreign uh, relations strategy, there is another time conception which was, uh, which was declined during the Chinese Communist Party's 16th Congress uh, that we faced more than 10 years strategic challenge time. Uh, the exact, exact time is from 2001, which uh, uh, was after the uh, September 11 incident. And the Chinese people find that uh, the United States uh, focusing the st international strategy in the Middle East and in Asia, there was a, con uh, there was a comparatively uh, peaceful and a stable situation. So China uh, faced a very good international uh, circumstance and we can do more cooperate with the uh, huge countries in the world. So that's why in the last 10 years we heard the conception G2 uh, which Chinese did not want to acknowledge the, this conception. We don't think that China is uh, one country that we can be accompanied or can be compared with the United States. But to international opinion, that G2 means that two countries which can influence international affairs, one uh, of the biggest uh, developed country and uh, one of the biggest uh, developing country. So international opinion circumstance played a very important role during the uh, time after uh, opening and the reforming. Uh, the next uh, time point is 1989. As you know, the uh, Tiananmen accident happened in uh, June 4th. After that, the international opinion circumstance changed totally. And the, the positive reporting and the positive uh, image of China disappeared just uh, in one night. And uh, we faced a very tough situation that uh, many criticized to Chinese human rights to Chinese uh, uh, Communist Party's uh, political system, the ruling system. And we found more and more crises happened during the 1990s, like uh, uh, Taiwan crisis, like human rights crisis, like religion crisis. And we also have some uh, t three T situation, means Taiwan, trade, Tibet, three T situation uh, between China and US relationship. Uh, the, the Chinese government tried to devote uh, to solve this kind of uh, negative situation. And uh, uh, they, they, they did very uh, important work, and I think the conclusion is much more better than 1989 because we faced the 2008 Olympics. This 2008 Olympics is a very important forward process of public diplomacy because uh, uh, we still think that 2008 is a very important changing milestone in uh, the history of contemporary China because we found that in 2008 some new regulation came out. The new regulation of foreign correspondent uh, work in China, me which means that uh, the foreign co correspondent can, be, can feel free to interview any people theoretically in China if they just uh, they just uh, uh, get the permission of the person who they want to interview. They need not to get permission from the local government or central government. This new regulation give a very important overview or draw a very important frame of China's new uh, law to uh, foreign correspondent in the coming years. So after 2008, we found that Foreign correspondent is very uh, uh, is more and more active in China, and after two thousand eight, there is an, another new things which changed very quickly. This is a new media, like Chinese Weibo, Chinese, Chinese Twitter, uh, Chinese microblog, Chinese Twitter. Uh, this uh, new media system give more content to Chinese common people. 
or we can say they trade a Chinese uh, citizen society. The Chinese citizen society appeared during Chinese foreign policy making process, give high pressure or positive influence to Chinese foreign policy making. So until now, when Chinese diplomats try to get interview uh, whenever from Chinese media or foreign media, the first expression or the first idea they will think is how Chinese people will react from my words. So uh, uh, in the crisis uh, in Huang Yandao uh, recent days, why some people think the Chinese foreign minister is so tough, so strong, uh, compared with uh, another crisis, Mei Jijiao crisis happened in 1998, uh, also between China and the Philippines. This time, Chinese slogan uh, of the spokesperson of Minister of Foreign Affairs is much more tough. They must care about the reaction between Chinese domestic opinion. So China is changing very quickly. It's not just a, uh, uh, like a situation one power can control the political system. This, this is like a different kinds of uh, department or different kinds of interest group play games in uh, Chinese policy, including public diplomacy. So if you check the different department who have relationship or concern about public diplomacy, you will find that, uh, like the list of Chinese organizations. Some uh, organization or some department is very important, like the, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, they have an uh, office of uh, the Office of Public Diplomacy in Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It existed for more than 20 years, since the early years of 1990s. But in the first 10 years, the, uh, the Office of Public Diplomacy in MFA, they just do the work to introduce Chinese foreign policy to domestic uh, audience. And from the early years of the 21st century, they change. They changed that to do the work not only to domestic audience, but also to foreign audience. So uh, now it's like uh, the, 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 in China, we also have an uh, ambassador uh, who in charge of public diplomacy. Uh, the next will be information office of the state council. This is a very important and very active department who working for public diplomacy. The uh, very famous director of this office is uh, Mr. Zhao Qizheng. I think he will uh, speak in the uh, in our Korea Foundation in the uh, future months. He is a very active person, and uh, he did the uh, director position in, uh, from 1998 to 2007, I think. So in uh, eight years, he opened a very important system in China, which is called spokesperson system. Now, uh, China's uh, government spokesperson, uh, we can say nearly all chaired by uh, the Information Office of State Council. Of course, Tsinghua University involved in this training program in a very early year. And the uh, uh, Minister of uh, Culture, who in charge of all the exhibition abroad, so the source of exhibition, the source of players, the source of shows coming from the Minister of Culture. And you will find that like the culture year between China and Russia, the culture year between China and South Korea, all in charge of, uh, uh, by the Minister of Culture. Minister of Education is a ministry looks like uh, give, have far distance from public diplomacy but it charged a very important institute, which is called the Confucius Institute. The Confucius Institute was charged by the uh, Minister of Education, and some of the person who working in Confucius Institute was selected by the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So it's like a co cooperation group, but mostly charged by the Minister of Education. The China International Publication Group published all the English uh, textbook or the English introduction of China to a foreign audience. So when you were invited to uh, uh, Chinese embassy in Seoul, you will find that huge numbers of uh, introduction of China, like uh, textbook, like handbook, or like the uh, like like different posters 
all published by the Chinese International Publication Group. But uh, China, uh, China International Public, uh, Publication Group are also include some work of Information Office of State Council. They, they cooperate together. Other cooperation, Guangdian Zongju, which in charge of China's domestic TV uh, or domestic publication, they do some supporting work to public diplomacy. And People's Congress and the People's Consultative co uh, com uh, com Committee, sorry, these two uh, institutes are legal institutes of uh, Chinese political system. They are very active in public diplomacy. Now, Mr. Zhao Qizheng is the spokesperson of uh, P Political Consultative Committee who uh, raised uh, the first journal, academic journal of public diplomacy in China. All the, uh, the, 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 the former list is the uh, Chinese uh, legal system or Chinese political system. And there are s several independent institutes or independent organizations which uh, join the public diplomacy work, like NGO supported by government. You will find that the China, China's Human Rights Foundation, which was supported by Information Office. You will find that Chinese Religion Foundation, which was uh, supported by the Chinese Religion uh, Committee. And you will find that the commercial group or state-run enterprises. The state-run enterprises recent years are very active in public diplomacy because they inv uh, uh, invested in some uh, developing countries. And I will mention that later that in Africa, now public diplomacy is a very important work which was charged by uh, Sino Petro oil, uh, some kinds of state-owned enterprises. Of course, we also have some uh, Chinese academia, like uh, between China and Japan, we have an uh, academic dialogue we call second chain dialogue, just to focus on historic uh, uh, common sense and historic uh, uh, confusions. So uh, the two countries uh, have this, this dialogue one or two times every year to try to clarify some uh, important historic uh, facts in the invading years uh, during the Second World War. This is a kind of public diplomacy. So uh, how to understand that public diplomacy in contemporary China? To Chinese scholar, I think public diplomacy means two thing, uh, three things. The first thing is, means that the part of uh, the, the uh, public diplomacy is one part of national soft power. For example, Confucius uh, Institute. I don't know whether you noticed the news recent days that uh, American, gov uh, American Congress give a, a loan letter to China, some Chinese uh, Confucius Institute uh, uh, employees coming from China that you should obey American law. And uh, they, this raised a very important debating between, this, uh, between US and China to say how to define Confucius Institute in United States. At last, uh, the uh, Department of State of the United States said that, oh, we should double check the uh, alum letter. And uh, we welcomed the uh, Confucius Institute to join the local education of uh, uh, United States. But this debating means one thing. This debating means some uh, American congressmen noticed that the cultural influence of Confucius Institute in United States. They, they worry about that. They are arguing about that. And they try to balance the cultural influence or uh, potential cultural influence of Confucius Institute. Though Confucius Institute still have some problem, I will mention later. The second part, uh, I think, uh, public diplomacy is one part of positive national image building. So, uh, for example, I just showed the advertisement in Times Square in New York in last year. And from these kinds of work, we found that whenever any kinds of department who are interested in public diplomacy, they take public diplomacy as positive, not objective. These two words are different in national image building. We focus on how to build positive image of China. Positive means that we, we, we like to uh, show good face. We like to give uh, some, uh, some, 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 some interesting 
some attractive things to foreigners. But positive is also a very important political slogan in Chinese political system. We, sometimes we will say that if you want positive image, give them truth. This is a kind of way to try to persuade or try to push Chinese officials to be more open-minded, to be more frank, to give facts, to uh, be ambitious to have press conference in some typical crisis, like uh, uh, Tibet crisis in 2008 or Xinjiang crisis in 2009. And you will find that after the uh, Olympics, China uh, tried to be uh, in the first time to announce some facts during some crisis. The third thing, public diplomacy is part of citizen identity. The, uh, from, uh, I, I should say from 1840, uh, during the past uh, more than 100 years, Chinese people try to find who we are for quite a long time. Public diplomacy is a kind of way to help Chinese people to identify self. Because China, China's developing is just the economic developing. During the economic developing, we found that the culture and the society modernization is a very tough work for quite a long time. How to balance the uh, commercial society and the traditional Chinese society? Uh, we have to balance the two, thi as the two things in, uh, in branding China. So sometimes we will find that China can give huge money on advertising, on branding China, but they don't know how to find important finger, how to find the important symbolic to express China. For example, we have two debatings, a very interesting debating, but lasted quite a long time. Dragon. Dragon is a very important, a very good uh, symbolic of China in Chinese history. But when Chinese diplomats try to explain that we are sons of dragon to Western audience, the problem is coming. In Western mysteries, uh, in, in Western myths, dragon looks like an uh, ugly, uh, uh, a kind of tough animal, a kind of very, it, it's, it's a beast. It's, it's not a good animal. It's not a good company with, with, with person. Uh, they protest that they wear us. They are very, uh, uh, the, 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 the things, the symbolic looks totally different with Chinese myths. So how to explain that we are kinds of sons of dragon? Some scholars raised uh, that in 2006, before Olympics, we should change. We should change dragon to panda. But Chinese audience cannot accept that, that we are the sons of panda. <laughs> <laughs> so this debating, means culture difference, but lasts quite a long time. But we will ask you the question, why don't you have confidence when you try to explain your culture to foreigners? So we have to uh, follow the steps of Western modernization. Some scholars in Singapore National University raised the question in the last year uh, in a conference in Beijing to say that China did nothing. But we found that in the past 10 years, now a space of branding is smaller and smaller. Now answer is why? We, we did nothing. But the economic, now economic uh, is bigger and bigger. But we haven't opened the space. We haven't opened the space of Chinese totally development and not just the economic. So uh, this is three parts. The challenge of uh, public diplomacy in contemporary ch China, uh, I will be very quickly to uh, show these four things. Uh, of course, we understand that the agenda setting of global media to China is a very uh, tough situation. For example, I will show you one thing. This newspaper last year. China, Indian, the, uh, the newspaper, uh, the, the report coming from International Herald Tribune, which was formed by New York Times, Indian to play T, uh, 72 tanks on border. So the picture is very interesting. Lhasa, Beijing, we will be there. 
this is an encouraging word in uh, Indian military uh, training position. So uh, this is what we call that negative report. And you will find another interesting thing is that during the demonstration in Egypt in last year, some person who raised Chinese words to ask President Mubarak to leave out. The person, I think, he get education in Confucius Institution in <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> this is soft power. I don't know, but he raised this Chinese slogan. It's not just a show to President Mubarak, but the Chinese slogan to Chinese correspondent. The second relationship with neighborhoods in peace, peaceful rising, in Chinese we call it peaceful rising. This is two demonstrations, one in uh, Vietnam, the second in Philippines, uh, both related with South China Sea uh, crisis. And as we know that uh, in China's uh, neighborhood problem, uh, we have some uh, sudden or random crisis that will, will influence the uh, common relationship in between China and the, the neighbor countries. The third will be domestic public opinion role in foreign policy making process and, nation, uh, and the new media and the national image. This is a, 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 a disaster which happened in uh, Southeast China in the last year. Uh, 19 Chinese crews were killed by the local criminal and uh, China forced uh, Thailand, uh, Burma, Laos to join the, uh, to, to open a joint investigation and finally catch the criminal in Laos. And the later one will be a very important case of a domestic case and related with uh, foreign relations. Because in the last year, in 2011, there was some accident of Chinese school bus in poor, poor country, uh, countryside. Uh, like some uh, school bus, some, some uh, pupil school has no school bus, so they have to hire some very local, uh, very common, even very uh, a very small car to carry the students and uh, accident happened, many students died during that time. China donate 50 school bus to Makitania in Egypt. So this raised a very important wave of crisis uh, to criticize the Chinese foreign ministry, uh, of, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to say why you donate school bus to foreign countries, but you ignore that even Chinese domestic person still have not enough school bus to use. So this case lasted two months in, uh, in last year. New media, Weibo, play more and more in important role in Chinese public diplomacy. So it forced Chinese people uh, when we talk about public di diplomacy, theoretically we understand that public diplomacy is the kinds of diplomacy. So it means that we have to face the two foreign um, audience. But this situation means that half of our work of public di diplomacy have to split into domestic persons to try to make domestic persons to understand why we have this kind of foreign policy and try to persuade them to support that. Uh, I, I will quick. Uh, so I give some time to uh, Q and A. Problem of public diplomacy in contemporary China. We're debating several things. The first thing is content, content of public diplomacy. We should use historic approach or realistic approach. Both of uh, either of these approach have uh, examples. If you sh see the uh, advertisement or if you see the introduction of 2000 Olympic Games, you will find a historic approach. You will find the Forbidden City, you will find the Great War, you will find a very powerful symbolic but few person. But if you saw the uh, Shanghai World Expo, you found that more and more person's face existed in re uh, realistic approach of China's public diplomacy. China liked to select more and more selected contemporary situation to show that what China is. The second is symbolic, man or order. For quite a long time because of uh, Chinese political uh, 
tradition and the Chinese culture's tradition. We like to explain order first. So if you re read a Chinese uh, public diplomacy book, which named China, it's like a handbook to introduce China. The first chapter always be China is a kind of country which was controlled by, uh, which was led by Chinese Communist Party and uh, multi-party cooperation system, some, something like that. But from 2007, we changed the way of writing to say China is a kind of country that full of person. We, we have the most uh, population, but the population looks like something, uh, this thing, other thing, or another thing. Looks like people to be the chap first chapter of Chinese public diplomacy. The direction always be uh, debating be, uh, is in Eastern approach or Western approach. Uh, I think in the past, uh, uh, in, in a time during 1949 to 1979, in the last 30 years, we have Eastern approach. We like to build a relationship between Africa and uh, Asia countries. So the public diplomacy approach is Eastern approach. But after reforming the opening, we change the direction. We pay much more attention on how American, how Europe see China. So we do many work to, to try to cooperate or try to persuade the foreign, uh, uh, and the international media uh, correspondent and try to uh, invite them to report China more. It means that in some meaning, China ignored the relationship between Africa and the neighbors, which lead some negative report and negative image in the past two or three years. So uh, in 2010 and 2011, there is a very important phenomenon in Africa that the local newspaper, the local television give more negative report to China, even to Chinese enterprises who invested in Africa and some of Chinese political system. And some uh, president candidate in Zambia who criticized China can be elected as the current president. He raised the flag of anti-China, anti-Chinese businessman. So it, it alarmed us that public diplomacy should be much more balanced, not just the Western approach. And then the audience, as, we, as I just mentioned, domestically or foreigners, this both uh, direction influence Chinese foreign policy uh, making more and more tough. Uh, the last thing I would mention some of, uh, of the influence of public diplomacy in uh, China-Korea relationship. I think we have a very good basement of public diplomacy between now two countries like Korean drama, like Korean culture influence Chinese even young generation very much and uh, theoretically and very seriously speaking, we have not very serious historic problem between no two countries. Uh, so in East Asia, I think South Korea and China have very good, uh, I can say the best basement of public diplomacy. And the second thing, I think there is increasing latent capability besides, uh, besides with increasing trade between two countries. These two countries have more opportunity on trade on business and on technology cooperation. So which means that Chinese people, when they visit Korea, they want to understand more about the advanced technology and they want to get more advanced management experience. These two things, uh, culture and the economy, uh, shape very good basement of public diplomacy. So we still have huge space of public diplomacy. But I think the uncertainty of public diplomacy between now two countries is crisis. So sometimes with the crisis approach will change in short time of both image uh, in now two countries. Uh, they play a very important role in, uh, in, in both public opinion. I think three things will be uh, potential crisis one is the relationship with uh, North Korea. Even in China, I think now the relation between China and the North Korea is a very important topic. Uh, debating, I mean, uh, freely in academia, 
though you heard about a very stable s slogan uh, in the government, but in, uh, in academia, in public opinion, many people in internet, many people discuss about how we face a new relationship between China and North Korea. I think North Korea, like, including like North Korea uh, defenders, will be a very important f session to raise the crisis. The second thing will be the uh, sea resources debating, or Su Yanjiao case. Uh, in China, we call it the Su Yanjiao case, uh, the uh, sea policeman and uh, the fisherman's uh, conflict. This conflict uh, exists uh, very uh, uh, existed for quite a long time, and in last year, because of the uh, fishermen killed the sea uh, policemen in. Uh, in, in, in the Yellow Sea. So uh, Chinese people try to discuss about that. And I think the nationalism flag raised again. But it disappeared very quickly because of more international news came out, like Syria international news, like Huang Yandao, uh, Huang, Yandao Huang Yan Island uh, crisis. But in some time, there is not big news. This kind of crisis will be a very uncertain problem to influence now two countries. And the third thing I think is hi some historical debating. Uh, like uh, something is true, but something is fake. I don't know uh, whether you know one of my students who did the research of 2005 and six uh, Global Times reporting on South Korea. He, uh, she she uh, analyzed the data and she found that the cultural and historic debating, like uh, the coming festival, traditional festival, which belongs to uh, and who have the right to ask for the world heritage uh, right of this coming festival of some uh, some some arts or of something like that. And they will they will be a very uncertain uh, session of public diplomacy in China. And the uh, last thing, I think we have very little designable symbolic to draw the overview of PD between us. Uh, as I remember that, that the United States raised a, a very important, a very famous lady whose name is Michelle Guan. She's a skating player as the uh, public diplomacy ambassador to China. And she visited many cities. She uh, played with Chinese uh, elites and the Chinese young generation. And she gave very high uh, price in China. And she tried to explain that American bond Chinese can play a very important role in American political uh, life and American cultural life. This kind of very stable, very designable symbolic of public diplomacy between our two countries, I think, uh, is very little. So both China and South Africa need to think about that, who is the uh, most welcome person in both countries. I think these four things will influence the future public diplomacy in, uh, between our two countries. Uh, I think this is a very brief understanding of public diplomacy in China. And I just uh, uh, list several things. Uh, welcome your commentaries and welcome your questions. Thank you very much.